Hello and welcome to exam sheet 4, question 4. We are looking at a Brayton cycle with re regeneration. Air is the working fluid. So we're already thinking it's going to be table A17 that we're going to be using. Since I'm going to solve this question using variable Pacific heats, so I will be using the tables. But one thing I do suggest you do is go through these questions and give it a go using the equations as well. Have a look at where your, your answers differ. Uh, pressure ratio is given, 7. Minimum and maximum temperatures in the cycle are 310 and 1150. And isentropic efficiency of both the compressor and the turbine are given along with the effectiveness in, as a percentage of the regenerator. So first of all we're looking at finding the air temperature at the turbine exit. So we are looking for T4. The values that we know are in fact 7. Of course I've drawn the diagram here. Uh, T3, this is the highest temperature. So T3 is equal to 115. OK. And of course T1 is the minimum temperature. So this is equal to 310K. And we also know Okay, so from the data sheet, we know that N isenterb is equal to H3 minus H4A over H3 minus H4S. The, this has been given, we know this, 75. Uh, H3, uh, we can quite easily find that using table 17. It's also worth writing down the value of PR3 as well because we'll use this. And just remember P4 over P3 is equal to 1 over 7. So we found H3 as well. Uh, it's here. Kilojoules per kg. So we found H3. What we're interested in finding is H4S. And then we can obviously find H4 actual. Since we know the pressure ratio, we're able to calculate uh, PR4. Since we know PR4 over PR3 is equal to P4 over P3 and this of course is for the isentropic point so what we can do is rearrange that equation PR4 is equal to 1 over 7 times 200.15 which we just calculated and that will give you a value of PR4 which is equal to 28.59 to two decimal places now of course you can interpolate this value uh, if we're going to use interpolation and you'll find that using table A17 that the corresponding enthalpy value for this which is H4S is equal to 711.77 kilojoules per kg. Now we have H4S here we have that value we can rearrange this equation here and by doing so we can then find H4A and once we found H4A we could quite easily interpolate to find T4A so rearranging that equation and that gives you a value of H4A equal to 803 Point one two kilojoules per kg. Now interpolate this using table A17. Of course I've been through interpolation before. Um, check out the uh, previous videos. Uh, example sheet 2, question 1 goes through interpolation if you're, you're, you need to refresh. And you'll find that that value T4A is equal to 782.82 Kelvin. Okay, so looking at part B, the network output. Wnet is equal to Wturb minus W compressor the energy out minus the energy in and of course looking at the diagram here you can see W turb is labeled as well as 
the work from the compressor which is equal to H3 minus H4 minus H2 minus H1 okay so first of all let's find H1 we know T1 so therefore we can use table A17 to find the corresponding value for H1 which is equal to 310.24 kilojoules per kg and also while we're here PR1 is equal to 1.5546 so therefore we found H1 we know H4 and H3 so we're interested in finding H2 now of course we can find H2 using the value and comp is equal to H this equation is given on the data sheet H1 minus H2A minus H1 of course we know H1 we also know the compressor and we're interested in H2A to put into this equation but in order to find H2A first of all we need to find H2S and then we can rearrange this equation and find H2A okay so in order to find H2S first we can use PR1 over PR2 is equal to P2 over P1 of course P2 over P1 is the pressure ratio so it's equal to 7 so and hence we previously wrote down PR1 we know that PR2 is equal to P2 over P1 PR1 which is equal to 7 times 1.5546 hence PR2 is equal to 10.88 so 4 PR2 equal to 10.88 we need to interpolate table A17 and of course interpolations covered in earlier videos that will give you H2S equal to 5.4122 kilojoules per kg um, therefore then what we've we found this value here we can rearrange this equation below H to find H2A and subbing in the values H2 is equal to 618.26 kilojoules per kg and as a result we now have H2 as well so we have all of the values that we need so subbing those values in will give you a value of 108.11 kilojoules per kg okay for part C we're now interested in finding the thermal efficiency and we know W net so we're interested in finding Q in Q in is equal to H3 minus H5 so we need to find we know H3 so we're interested in finding H5 the effectiveness of the regenerator was given as 65% so we're going to use this equation from the data sheet now gen is equal to Q regen actual divided by Q regen max and of course this is equal to H5 minus H2 over H4 minus H2 Looking back at our diagram, best case is that the temperature, hence enthalpy of air entering the combustion chamber, is equal to the temperature of turbine exhaust leaving the regenerator. So, this is shown on a small diagram. So, what you can see is T2 is equal to T6, H2 and therefore H2 is equal to H6 uh, this is based on the equilibrium assumption and you also can assume that 
H4 is equal to H5 or T4 is equal to is equal to T5 from the steady flow equation Q regen max is equal to H4 minus H6 which is equal to H4 minus H2 since H6 is equal to H2 and regen actual is equal to H5 minus H2 is equal to H5 minus H2 over H4 minus H2 so we need to rearrange this equation for H5 Therefore, H5 is equal to 738.43 kilojoules per kg. Okay, so now we know H5 as well, so we can quite easily calculate Q in, and then we can put Q in in there and calculate the thermal efficiency. So, plugging our values into here, Q in is equal to... And since we know Q in now, nth is just a simple calculation. To 0.2248 or 22.48%. Thanks.